In this third lesson of chapter 8, we're going to, uh, again, deal with fractions, okay, rational expressions. We're going to deal with fractions, and we're going to deal with some operations with them. In this lesson, we're going to deal with how do we add and subtract fractions. Uh, so similar to the last one in that we're still working with fractions or, or rational expressions. So the problems will look kind of similar, except in the last lesson we were multiplying and dividing, uh, which is generally considered easier. Uh, and in this lesson we're going to do addition and subtraction. Uh, of fractions. The title of this slide says warm up to, to try these two problems. If you'd like to, I would hit pause right now and see if you can do these. They are exercises in adding or subtracting fractions, which as you will remember, um, in order to do this you need a common denominator, which is what we're going to be doing a lot of today. The first problem 2 fifths plus 7 fifteenths. We need a common denominator between 5 and 15. Um, well, I can make the 5 be a 15 if we multiply it by 3. Well, I can't just multiply the bottom by 3 unless I also multiply the top by 3. So this becomes 6 over 15 plus 7 over 15. Now we can add the fractions. And when we add fractions, we add the numerators together we keep the common denominator, 13 fifteenths. Another way to do this, another way to maybe see this is, um, in the next one I'll kind of illustrate, 11 twelfths minus 3 eighths. It might be hard to find the common denominator between 12 and 8, or it's a little harder than this one. The first one, all I had to do was multiply the smaller number by something and it made the bigger number. And it doesn't really happen that way over here. So I might rewrite this as 11 over 12 is 4 times 3 minus 3 over 8 is 4 times 2. If I can factor the denominators, it makes it easier to see um, what pieces they already have in common and what pieces they would need to make them common. Okay, um, So I see they already share the 4. So I don't have to mess with the 4. This fraction has a 3 in its denominator. This one doesn't. So I need to multiply this one by a 3. And I do it to top and bottom. Okay, so now both fractions have the 4. Both fractions have the 3. Almost there. This fraction has a 2 and this one doesn't. So we put a 2 here and a 2 there. Okay. Now if you look at both fractions and ask the question, do they share a common denominator? Absolutely, they do. They both have a 4 times 3 times 2. Okay. So I have 22 minus 9. That's the numerator. Over the common denominator, which is 4 times 3 times 2. 4 times 3 times 2 is 24. Go ahead and subtract in my numerator, and I get 13 over 24. This strategy and kind of approach to the problem is more or less how we're going to do the problems today. All right, first off, to not just completely overwhelm you kind of right out of the gate, I thought we'd look at some problems that already have like denominators. Okay, well, it's, it's easy when they already have common denominators. Um, we can just go ahead and add the numerators together. Um, x plus x makes 2x. Negative 3 plus negative 2 makes negative 5 over that common denominator x plus 4. There's nothing more to that. Okay, same thing here. Notice they already share common denominators, so the answer is already going to be over x squared plus 1. We just have to simplify the numerator. 3x minus 6x. It's negative 3x. Negative 4 minus 1 negative 5 and that's done. You know, piece of cake if the denominators are already common as they were in these two problems. Alright, what about the unlike denominators? How do we handle a problem where the denominators are not common already? And the answer is similar to the problem we did a couple slides ago. I want to completely factor the denominators first. If I were to factor the denominators, then I could see if they share any pieces in common already. 
So here it is, the problem rewritten. And there's the first one, factored. The second one, I don't have to factor x plus 4. It's already in a factored state. Now, so I can see in doing this, they both share x plus 4 already. This one has an x minus 1 that this one doesn't have. So to make them common, I need to multiply by x minus 1. And if I put it in the bottom of that fraction, I must also put it on the top of that fraction. So now, looking at the fractions, are they common denominators? Well, absolutely they are. Common denominators x plus 4, x minus 1. The numerator is x minus 3, that's the first fraction, plus this one I'll distribute to get 2x squared minus 2x. And now I just reduce the numerator of this fraction, or simplify, sorry, 2x squared minus x minus 3. Again, I could foil the denominator if I wanted to, um, you know, but I would say, what's the purpose? Why would we want to foil that denominator? A second example with unlike denominators to begin. I'm going to begin by factoring everything. First fraction is perfectly fine as it is. Second fraction is x plus 2, x minus 2 in its denominator. Okay. If I do this, then it should be obvious to all watching that x plus 2 is in common already. Uh, the first fraction, however, it's missing the x minus 2. So we need an x minus 2 to top and bottom of that fraction. So now the common denominator x plus 2, x minus 2. It's a shared common denominator. The numerator of this fraction, if I distribute, makes x squared minus 2x. This fraction here just is plus negative 8, so minus 8. Now I'm not going to call that done yet, because I'm going to check and see. You know, I always want to check, and I should have mentioned on the last side, um, check for reducing. Okay, do we have a reducible fraction? Uh, I notice the numerator is a factorable quadratic. It'd be minus 4 plus 2. Okay. If I factor that numerator, well, absolutely, it's obvious that x plus 2 is shared on the numerator and denominator of that fraction and can be reduced. The answer is x minus 4 over x minus 2. I have one more example of combining fractions with unlike denominators. If you'd like to pause it here to try this on your own, you certainly can. Um, and then you can resume once you're done and see if you've got it correct. Uh, factoring the denominators completely first. So we've got 2x squared minus 30 over x squared minus 9 is x plus 3 x minus 3 minus this is x plus 5 over x plus 3 okay well I see that they share x plus 3 in common this second fraction needs an x minus 3 and if I put one on bottom I gotta put one on top So that makes, let's go this way, one fraction over x plus 3, x minus 3. The numerator here, I can't do anything with that. The numerator here, I can foil that, and I need to. I also need to pay attention to the minus sign that's in front of this. So it's going to be minus, I'm going to use parentheses to show that I'll distribute the minus later. Uh, foil this, I get x squared minus 3x plus 5x 
minus 15. Let's come down here. Start combining like terms. 2x squared minus x squared is x squared. Uh, the x's are only here and they can combine to positive 2x, but I'm subtracting. So minus 2x. And then negative 30 minus negative, which is plus 15, so negative 15 over x plus 3, x minus 3. We look for opportunities to factor that numerator because factoring it might lead to reducing the fraction. Factors x minus 5, x plus 3. And yes, indeed, um, that can reduce. x plus 3 is reduced out of there. We finish with x minus 5 over x minus 3. All right, let's finish with a couple of slides looking at a, a kind of scary, intimidating looking problem. Uh, it's a complex, or some books call compound fractions, where we have fractions divided by other fractions. Um, first off, if we just rewrite this so it's not as scary looking, maybe I have 3 over x plus x over 2 divided by x minus 1 over x. Okay. If, I, if I change the divide sign to a division sign like this, well then it's not as scary because in the last lesson we had shown that we just change this to multiply and we flip this fraction and you know, it's a piece of cake. So it, it's not something to be that intimidated. The, the scary part of this problem is in fact the numerator of this fraction has two fractions that need to be added together. Two fractions that need to be combined with a common denominator. So let's do that work right here, um, what I've got written down right here. So we've got a 2 in this fraction, and this one needs a 2. I've got an x on this fraction, this one needs an x. So if I combine those two fractions, I can drop parentheses after I do that, we're looking at 6 plus x squared divided by 2x divided by x minus 1 over x. Okay, It's not it's very scary looking anymore. It could have been in the last lesson at this point. Change that division to multiplication. I flip that second fraction. So we're here. Um, you can and quite possibly should think of this maybe this way which would allow you to reduce out these common x's. So in the numerator we have 6 plus x squared. Denominator we have 2 times x minus 1. I can't factor the numerator, nothing's in common, therefore I can't reduce the fraction, and this is all finished. Finally, one more of the same type, uh, another complex fraction. Again, a good opportunity to pause the video and try it on your own. See if you can model it like the last one and then hit play and, and see if you did it right. Um, I'm going to rewrite the problem. 1 over x plus 1 over 2x divided by x plus 4 over x minus 2. We do need common denominators to combine these two fractions, so this needs a 2 to top and bottom. So now they both have a common denominator there. This fraction becomes 2 plus 1, so 3 over 2x times, I'll flip over here, x minus 2 over x plus 4. Think of this as one big fraction. There's nothing common in this fraction. There's no opportunity to reduce this at all. I'm just going to kind of squish it together to make it look cleaner. That's done. Nothing to reduce. It's just a matter of combining some fractions, rewriting as product, and, and that's in a simplified state now.